Hello, I'm Old Norris Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm back for the concluding installment of my six-part video series recapping Njol Saga. Now, of course, in a uh, short series of videos such as this, or, well, even a very long series of videos such as this, it's not going to be possible to recap every single bit of the action, especially when you have a saga like Njol Saga that's just an apocalypse of names. I mean, they're entire just side quests uh, left out of this recap, uh, as well as a lot of the legal wrangling. So I hope that, of course, is understood. Uh, but nonetheless, I think that this is a good recap of the main thrust of the action for those who are new to the saga or who perhaps are renewing their familiarity with it. Now, when we last left off, Flossi had burned Njol, his wife Bergthor, his sons Skarpedin, Grim, and Helgi, and Njol's grandson Thor, son of his son-in-law Kori, but Kori himself had happened to escape. Now Flossi and the rest of the burners are standing around the burnt house in the morning watching the flames go out when a man approaches and asks who died here. Flossi says Njol, his wife, his sons, his grandson, and his son-in-law Kori, and the man says, well, your information is wrong. I know for a fact that Kori is alive. I saw him this morning. Flossi says, well, did he have any weapons? And the man says, yes, he had his sword, Fjorsvovnir, life ender. <laughs> uh, but it had gone uh, 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 blue from the flames. And uh, I remarked on that to Cory, but he said that he would retemper the blade in the blood of the burners. So Flossi, of course, is concerned about this, and he advises all of the burners to stay close together with him. And... Uh, so they ride along. Now, now it's notable that Flossi will never actually boast about the burning. He calls it Storvirki och Ilvirki, a great work and an evil work, uh, but never speaks about it in terms that, that suggest that he's proud of what he's done necessarily. One of the first things the burners are going to want to do is kill a man called Ingjald. Ingjald is the brother of Hrothni, who was Njal's concubine. Ingjald had initially pledged to be part of the team avenging Hoskuld, the team that eventually became the Burners, but he backed out uh, under incitement from his sister Hrothni, the Els concubine. Uh, the Burners go and find Ingeld riding, and uh, Flossi says, if you're not Rager, this is uh, the same as the word Arger, it implies womanly, feminine, cowardly, uh, you'll stand right there and let me send a message to you. Flossi takes up a spear, throws it at Ingeld, and uh, the spear pierces through Ingjald's leg. Well, Ingjald takes us in a manful way and he says, all right, Flossi, if you're not blauther, this means moist, it's another word that implies feminine, weak, etc. Uh, you'll stand right there and let me send a return message. He picks up a spear, throws it at Flossi, but Flossi flinches and the spear ends up killing his favorite nephew. Now, Ingjald gets away and when Cory finds out about this, he's very pleased to hear about it, of course. Now, Cory, for his part, is going to team up with some people in uh, Njol's family, including Thorhall Oskrimsson, who was fostered by Njol, and whose sister Thorhall was married to Helgi Njolson. Uh, Thorhall is so shocked and uh, scandalized when he hears about how Njol has died that uh, blood actually blows out of his ears till he faints. An interesting emotional reaction. And of course, he's embarrassed about how manly this is, but he pledges to help Cory avenge the burning. Now, both Flossi and Cory have dreams following the burning. Uh, Flossi dreams one night that a man comes out of a mountain and calls to him, listing an incredibly long list of names of men involved in the burning. And Flossi has a relative interpret the dream, and the relative tells him these are men who will be killed in vengeance by Cory. And they both agree this is not a good idea to tell these men named in the dream that... Uh, Flossi had this dream. Well, the uh, case is going to be brought at the all thing. Interestingly, it's going to be Morth who is going to prosecute the burners for Kori and company. Uh, Morth, of course, who has been an enemy of the Njal sons for most of this saga, but uh, Kori and uh, his new allies uh, get Morth's father-in-law to threaten to take Morth's wife away if Morth doesn't prosecute this case. So Morth goes along. And uh, Flossi retains the services 
of an attorney called Oil. Now lawsuits are brought and there is a lot of elaborate legal wrangling and this goes on for chapter after chapter but finally uh, just as the audience today reading this is getting sick of it so does Thorhall. Thorhall stands up uh, takes a spear and bursts a boil in his leg with it and then throws the spear through one of the burners beginning a great battle at the all thing one of the greatest violent losses of life uh, ever recorded at the all thing in the sagas or in history now Cory is going to kill and maim several men during this battle finally Flossi is going to order a retreat down a ravine but his men's retreat is going to be blocked by Snorri the Gothi who has been mentioned previously uh, he's often uh, depicted as a powerful man in these sagas uh, Snorri the Gothi's men will advance down the ravine forcing Flossi's men backwards toward their attackers uh, there's a lot more creative deaths in this battle scene here for instance one man gets thrown into a boiling cauldron but eventually a truce is called as evening comes and the dead are taken to a church and the next morning many men on both sides call for a settlement Corey refuses to settle because of course he won't take uh, the killings at the all thing is equivalent to the burning because of how horrible the burning was and because of the loss of his own son during the burning. Uh, Snorri the Gothi ends up arbitrating between the rest of Njal's family and the burners though. Uh, he ends up counting Njal as worth three times a normal man. Uh, Helgi and Grimm are even counted as, as double as is Beric Thor. But Skarpheven's death is not counted as worthy of compensation because his death is counted as compensation in itself for the killing of Hoskuld uh, Thronson Gothi. And Thor, Cory's son, is notably also not compensated because, of course, Cory doesn't want to settle and he's the person who would accept compensation for that death. Uh, Flossi is ended up uh, granted lesser outlawry. This is also what happened to Gunnar earlier in the saga, of course, so he will be uh, exiled from Iceland for three years. Some of the other burners, uh, including Grani Gunnarsson, Gunnar's own son, will receive full outlawry. Uh, in Grani's case, that might have to do with the fact that, of course, he killed. Uh, his own father's adventure, so this is an extra dastardly killing, whereas Flossi was acting more um, along the natural obligations of his family ties. Now, Cory is going to team up with uh, one of Njal's uh, great nephews, I think that's what it's called, his sister's, Njal's sister's grandson, uh, a man named Thorgeir. They're going to ride away and uh, they're going to attack a group led by one of the burners, Ketil of Mork. Now, Ketil of Mork is an interesting position here. We've mentioned before that Ketil is married to one of Njol's daughters, so he is Njol's son-in-law. He's married to Njol's daughter, Thorgerith, and yet he was involved in the burning. Well, Cory is going to come after him and his men, and Cory and Thorgeir are going to kill several of them, but Cory is going to refuse to kill Ketil of Mork because their wives are sisters. When Ketil comes back to Flossi, Flossi is going to be impressed he says, wow, there's not many men like Cory. He really actually admires the way that Cory is prosecuting this feud uh, against him and his men. Well, Cory ends up uh, communicating all of his property as well as the safeguarding of his wife and daughters uh, to Thorgeir. Uh, he has Thorgeir, he encourages Thorgeir to actually settle and Thorgeir eventually does, leaving Cory alone. Cory's gonna go off traveling alone and eventually he's going to stop uh, for an evening at the home of a man named Bjorn. Bjorn is a third generation descendant of Irish slaves uh, and he's portrayed as kind of a kind of a bumbling lovable funny sidekick guy. Uh, oddly enough he is married to Valgerith who is a cousin of Gunnar and she does not love him very much. She's married to him for his money and uh, Bjorn is often boasting about his manly qualities about what a uh, an awesome fighter he is, what a dranger he is and his wife just keeps undercutting him. You know don't listen to him Corey he's a nobody but Bjorn, like a good comic relief sidekick, insists that he is a manly man that Cory could have use for. Well, in the meantime, Flossi is going to trade some land for a ship uh, during the grace period he has before his outlawry goes into effect, because of course he was going to sail away with the rest of the burners away from Iceland so that they don't have to get killed by Cory or somebody else while they're outlaws. Uh, but in the meantime, Ketil of Mork is going to leave uh, the safety of numbers again with a small group to go collect some money somewhere. Now Bjorn and Cory are going to attack them. There's going to be yet another fight and in the process uh, 
there's going to be more of the burners killed. Uh, Bjorn is actually going to get a good hit in. He's going to cut off the hand of Grani Gunnarsson. Uh, but once again, when Corey faces off with Kettle of Mork, Corey is going to refuse to kill him. Even when Kettle comes at him with a spear, Corey stomps the spear and then bear hugs Kettle. It says no matter how many times uh, he has Kettle's life in his hands, he's never going to kill him because their wives are sisters. Well, in the meantime, uh, Flossie now is going to leave. Uh, Corey is going to go back uh, with Bjorn to his house, tell his wife what a good job Bjorn did. Uh, and actually, he ends up getting uh, his ally Thorgair, remember Njal's uh, relative, to uh, give Bjorn some new land. Uh, and people are going to think a great deal of Bjorn now that he has this new farm from Thorgair. And after his uh, help given to Corey, uh, and going after the burners. Flossie sails away, goes to Orkney, and uh, ends up being followed by Cory. Now there's a weird scene, or well, there's a, a whole digression in here about the Battle of Clontarf in Ireland. This occurred on uh, Good Friday in 1014 uh, in a, a battle between Irish and Norse and According to the saga, many of the burners participated on the north side. There's not a whole lot that this battle has to do with the main thrust of action in Njal's saga. It does have some interesting events, uh, including weird miracles like where a sword blow cuts the head off of the Irish king Brian Boru and cuts a little boy's arm off uh, the standing next to the king, but the king's blood falls on the boy's arm and then heals the stump of the arm or uh, where one of the uh, Norsemen, I think it's Thorstein, uh, see the is uh, in the Norse army as it's fleeing from an Irish prince and he stops to tie his shoe and the Irish prince asks Thorstein, what are you doing? And he says, well, you know, I can't reach my home in Iceland if I run away tonight, no matter how fast I run. And the Irish prince ends up sparing him. So there's some cool scenes here. There's also a uh, poem called uh, Darrader Ljóð, which features this uh, vision of the Norns or perhaps Valkyries uh, weaving men's fates using guts and blood as part of the of the the weft and womb weft and, and, and woof I don't know anything about sewing uh, but none of this really has anything to do with the main thrust of the story of Njal saga anyway Cory on Christmas Day is going to show up in Orkney where Flossie is and he's going to come to a hall where the burners are gathered together with the Earl of Orkney. And when Cory gets there, he's going to hear Gunnar Lambeson. Remember, he was a young man when uh, uh, when Scarpeth and Cory et al. attacked Throwan and his band on the frozen river. But uh, Scarpeth uh, spared Gunnar Lambeson and Granny Gunnarsson because they were young. Well, Gunnar Lambeson is going to be there telling the story about the burning. And someone asks, Cory hears someone ask, how did Scarpeth hold up? And Gunnar says, well, he held out pretty well at the beginning, but by the end he was crying. Corey hears this and he's angered. He runs inside, cuts off the head of Gunnar Lambeson, which sprays blood all over everybody. The Jarl ends up shouting for Corey to be apprehended, but Corey is actually from this part of the world. A lot of people recognize him and like him. And even Flossie speaks up on his behalf and says uh, that, you know, he's only... He, he, he's done this with justification, and so Cory is allowed to sort of trudge out with no one following him. And then Flossie takes over telling the story, and he's much more fair to everybody. Well, Cory is going to end up tracking the rest of the burners all around the British Isles. Uh, there's some memorable scenes here, including when he finds one of them named Cole uh, counting some money in Wales at a market. And uh, as he's counting out his money, he goes seven, eight, nine. Cory cuts off his head. And the head, as it spins off, says 10. But uh, Flossie is going to end up burying Cole, never speaking a bad word about Cory ever, and making a pilgrimage to Rome to be forgiven by the Pope himself for his sins. Later, Cory makes his own pilgrimage and is also forgiven by the Pope. And by the time he gets back to the Scottish Isles, Cory hears that his wife has died in Iceland. He takes a ship home later in the year than is wise, and he ends up shipwrecking in Iceland in a heavy snowstorm. The closest home is Flossie's, and Corey decides to put uh, Flossie's hospitality to the test. 
After all, hospitality is a central tenet of the Norse culture, as we've often seen at Hovamal and in many of the sagas. Cory goes straight to Flossie's home and knocks on the door. Flossie recognizes him, allows him in, allows him to sit next to himself and feast him, and Cory ends up staying with Flossie the whole winter. So now Flossie's great esteem for the avenging demon Cory uh, has come to fruition with him being able to offer uh, Cory hospitality. And in fact, he even ends up marrying his niece Hildegun, who had been married to Holskull Thrones and Gothi, uh, a man that Cory helped kill to Cory, making peace between the families, reconciling them, and bringing the saga of Njal to an end with peace between the Burners and the ultimate Avenger of the Burning. Well, as I said, I hope this recap has been useful to you one way or another, and uh, I hope that if it has, that you'll consider donating on my Patreon page. Even a dollar a month helps me continue to make these videos about Norse language, myth, culture, and sagas. And I hope that you'll check out my own translations. I've translated the Poetic Edda, as well as the Saga of the Volsungs and the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, and I have more translations, as well as quite possibly a new textbook about the Old Norse language forthcoming in the near future. For now, from beautiful Wyoming, I'm wishing you all the best.